everybody, Salty Sweet Ren here with another episode of Swooning Over Stan, the Grunkle Dating Simulator. And I don't even know what to feel. I've been so far I've been going for Ford. And I just started this I just started doing this game like oh, okay, this is just gonna be a silly little haha -ha sort of thing. I was not expecting to literally swoon over Fo Stanford. Like like Oh my goodness! Like, I'm pan romantic. I've got, but I've got a strong preference for women. So, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. This is kind of weird for me. But uh, well, I'm also coy romantic, which means sometimes it's hard for me to tell like whether the attraction is romantic or platonic. But when you're blushing like really hard, like at like if I'm feeling something at that time, I can tell. But like it's kind of like a after a while, like oh my gosh! And your sport is a fictional character. This is weird for me. But anyway, let's jump right back in. So I've got my water with me again, so I'm gonna have to take a drink from it every now and then, doing some of the voices and stuff. Someone thumps their fist on the storage room door, stirring you from sleep with a jolt and the thud as you fall off the mattress. Scrambling to your feet, you step over to the door and swing it open wide. Ren! I need your help! It's at that moment that you look down to see Waddles swabbed in her arms, wearing a top hat and a small bow tie. Why is Waddles looking so dapper? He does look pretty dashing, doesn't he? Wait, we're not here to dish out compliments! There's an emergency! A love emergency! Wait a second, the save, like, apparently, the save, the, this, the name of the scene for this save file said, like, something about a wedding. It's, she's not planning my wedding, is she? Or is, is it a wedding for Waddles? I'm hoping it's a wedding for Waddles. I could deal with that a little better. Mabel stares up at you with wide eyes, her little arms unmoving as Waddles attempts to wriggle free from her grasp. This kid's stronger than she looks. Knowing Mabel... This could mean she has a new crush, from what Dipper's told you, she's still deeply rooted in her boy crazy phase, or she desperately wants to wed Waddles to some unsuspecting critter outside. I think it's probably the latter. Waddles and Gompers are renewing their vows today and I can't find Gompers to put his gown on! You gotta help me find him! You weren't actually expecting your second guess to be right. I was. Okay, wait, Mabel, just calm down for a second. We have to find Gompers! The ceremony's in, the ceremony's in 20 minutes! Waddles wriggles himself free and runs down the hallway to freedom, ignoring Mabel's streak of protest as she chases him. You're compelled to go back to bed, deciding this is almost definitely a dream, but jog after Mabel regardless. <laughs> you catch sight of Mabel as she leaps over Dipper, who's sitting on the floor with a large array of graph paper and chewed pencils. She runs to the back door, suspiciously open, after Waddle's snorting self, yelling at him to not lose his tie. So I'm guessing Dipper's setting up some Dee Dee and Mordy. I like how she- I like how they literally actually had her just kind of go like- like right over- right over him. What Mabel? What's going on? Waddle's wedding gompers? You're a little out of breath. Mabel's fast. Dipper smacks a head to his, his Dipper smacks a hand to his forehead, dragging it down his face dramatically. Of course. She told me they were renewing vows or something. They got married last summer, but she misses the pizzazz of weddings. Dipper looks nonplussed, but you can tell he's at least a little invested. Are you gonna help her with whatever that was? I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, that's Mabel for you, but it's her thing, I guess. There's a moment of silence. I'll help if you do. Thanks, Dipper. And with that, you run past him. Dipper stutters of surprise, growing fainter as you head outside. Mabel's already a ways away when you burst out into the shack's backyard. Fortunately, Stan and Ford are nowhere in sight. 
You're not sure what you'd think of them finding... You're not sure what you'd think of them finding you searching for a goat bride as Mabel calls out to lure G Gompers home. That would be... I've got anxiety disorder. That would be very distressing for me. Come on, Gompers! I already booked the second honeymoon and the cater... You, you booked a honeymoon and caterers for this. By the way, brides are so cliche. How are you setting all of this up for a pig and a goat wedding? She's seriously invested in this farm quarter marriage. That or she's watched way too many dramatic romance movies. Or both. Probably both. Gompers, come on, goat pal. Where are you? Hello, kitties, for running around in the background. You'll probably hear their little footsteps going back and forth as they chase each other, so... You hear Dipper head towards Mabel to help her look, so you veer opposite, opting to cover more ground in search of the runaway goat bride. Where should I look? Um... I'm not sure, honestly. The roof I could probably cover more ground, but I'm a little afraid of heights. Under foundation? I don't know, I wouldn't check someone's car, that's the thing. You duck onto your knees and look under the house. There's a large hole that leads somewhere underground, but you figure Gompers isn't un down there if that's Ford's illustrious basement Dipper's gushed about. The roof would probably be my next look. I would not look inside of someone's car. You walk backwards and put a hand to your brow, shielding your eyes from the sun as you search the scaffolding of the shack. Nothing. You continue, walking to the side now until rays of sunlight obscure the view above the sign for the gift shop. Rather serendipitously, a cloud glides overhead to block the sun and you're able to look up higher, seeing the misspelled lettering, the various wear and tear in the roof, and a small billy goat munching on part of the weather vane. Wait. Hey, Mabel! Yeah? You point up to the roof at Gompers. Here comes the bride. Mabel shrieks, Gompers! And sprints off into the gift shop, slamming the door so hard the open sign flips to close. There's silence for a moment, then something flips open on the small roof's, on the roof's small balcony, and Mabel pops out from underneath, climbing up onto the roof and attempting to coax Gompers down. There's a ladder up to that little balcony thing inside the gift shop. It's pretty cool for fireworks. Mabel pulls a sandwich from her sleeve, you can't help but imagine what else she has up there, and waves in Gomper's direction. And he trots down towards and he trots toward the balcony, hopping down to Mabel's level and snatching the sandwich from her hand. She grabs the goat and heads back down the ladder into the gift shop. She must be seriously strong if she can lift a goat like that, but then she can also lift the waddles, but he's only fifteen pounds. But then she's also able to pick up Dipper and like swing him around, so yeah, she's pretty strong. Oh, Gompers! You can't get the pre-wedding jitters anymore! You're already married! You can't get away that easy! Thanks a billion, Ren! You've saved the wedding! And with that, Mabel gets to work on wrestling Gompers into his dress, yelling commands to Dipper to grab Waddles, who thankfully didn't get his bow tie dirty when he dashed away earlier, and get everything ready for the most important ceremony in the history of ever! Maybe an exaggeration, but Mabel's excitement is undoubtedly contagious. Okay, once Stip finds Waddles, I think we got everything ready. I am, of course, the Vi Vicar Caterer Proud Mother Musical Guest Combo. Zipper's gonna take pictures for my scrapbook. Hey, I never agreed to that. <laughs> Zipper, please! I've got to officinate. Officinate, uh, whatever. Do you mean officiate? See? I'm so busy I can't even talk right! Please, Dipper! I'll help you with some nerd thing later, I pinky swear! Dipper contemplates this, hand at his chin, mirroring his grunkle Ford, of course. As long as you actually do this time, then yeah, I'll take pictures. Mabel jumps up and down with excitement, jostling poor gompers in her arms. Yay! Thank you, Dipper! I owe you one! This is what the best brother looks 
like right here when Haha, <laughs> okay, you you don't have to do that whole thing again. I'll get back to Waddles, you get back here. Okay, now that we have that fixed, that means we have wait! Sue's left already! My ring bearer's gone! Oh no, what are we gonna do, Gompers? Gompers gives the intelligent answer of bah, chewing on his bridal veil. I could ask them, but I don't know. Gompers chooses that moment to look into Mabel's eyes and bleed at her insistently. Mabel, naturally, takes this as a sign. A sign from Goat. Oh no, she's gonna ask me. You're right! Of course, this is your special day, again! Mabel turns to you with pleading eyes. Hey, Ren! Could you be the new ring bearer for the ceremony? Uh, <laughs> I can't say no to that face, but... I guess? <laughs> Mabel reads your less than enthusiastic response as a yes, and grins at you excitedly. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Okay, let me go grab them! Uh, Stan and Ford are gonna walk in on this, oh my goodness, I'm very sure, but... Mabel runs back into the house, and you hear her thudding upstairs faster than the hungry waddles. Gompers, thankfully, still occupied by the half a sandwich t Mabel taunted him with, stays put. She comes back soon after with a fluffy purple pillow and two clear sticks. After snapping the sticks in half, glow sticks, they're glow sticks, she curls them into small bracelet-sized rings. These are so much more fun than rings, plus Waddles can put on his tail that looks super handsome! Waddles oinks agreement. Agreement. In his mad dash out the house, he's lost his top hat. Hold your hands out, palm up, and get down so you're not as tall. They can't put their rings on each other if you're way up there. Yeah, I'm pretty tall. She's got a point. You dug to your knees in the dirt, and Mabel turns your hands palm up, reverently placing the pillow and glow stick rings atop them. Okay, Mabel, I'm here with the camera for Ren. Why are you on the ground? You gesture to the happy couple with a wide arc of your arm. They needed a ring bearer. Well, I guess they do. Mabel nods, small hands on her hips. She looks over the wedding scene and mumbles to herself, checking things off a mental checklist. Okay, I think we have- Wait! I forgot the flower pebbles! I'll be right back! And she's gone again. Leaving you alone with a pig room, a goat bride, and two glow stick brands of matrimony. Goatrimony. That kinda works. You decide not to crack that pun on Dipper, who's, imag who's examining his disposable camera. He pops the back open and sighs, smacking a hand to his forehead. He's gonna leave, and then Ford and Stan are gonna see me there doing whatever, and oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> this one's out of the film. It must have been the one Mabel used at Candy's party. He looks up at you and shrugs. I'll go get one of my spares. Make sure these two don't get go anywhere or Mabel will- Well, you know Mabel. You haven't known Mabel as long as Dipper has, but you understand immediately. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> You're left alone in the backyard with a groom's pig, a bride goat, two glow sticks, and a broken disposable camera. While you'd love to say you've been absolutely in this situation before, you unfortunately have not. <laughs> I really am very happy for you both, Waddles and, um, Gompers. Both animals turn to you, nonchalant to the current state of events. But I can't believe Ma Mabel forgot the flower petals. Jeez, that's not like Mabel. She would be all over the flowers. Oh boy. <laughs> Just as you go to continue the one-sided conversation between human, goat, and pig, you hear two voices coming from around the house. It's Stan and Ford, isn't it? I'm getting a drink of water. Two very familiar voices. Listen, Sixer, if you hadn't gone off about the wobbly junker. The gobblewonker, Stanley. 
Has Zipper really never told you? Then you wouldn't have rigged out the kit at the store we needed, and we would have, oh, I don't know, the stuff to fix my house after you got a car stuck in it! I need, a, I need another drink. Stan's voice makes me lightheaded. Why? I actually can only do Stan's voice after... Like, my brother and I will sometimes do the Stan's voice back and forth, or just, like, talk in the voices. The only way I can do the voice properly is if I kind of exercise, like... If, it, is if I do the exercise, like, My ex-wife still misses me, but her aim is getting better! Okay, I should be able to do Stan's voice now. It's still my house. And besides, if he was a fisherman, he needed to know... Oh, boy! <laughs> oh, no. Both stand and forward, round the corner to find you sitting on your heels next to Waddles and Gompers, brandishing a pillow and glow sticks in the dirt. The three of you stare at each other in silence. <laughs> Mabel needed a ring bearer for the wedding. It's at that moment that Mabel kicks down the back door, runs to your side, and throws rose petals atop your head. You blow a rose petal off the tip of your nose and grin at Mabel. I think our bride and groom are ready to renew their vows, don't you? <laughs> Mabel nods emph emphatically at you before turning to her grunkles, lighting up a hundred watt smile. Yes! Grunkle Stan! Grunkle Four! You guys got back just in time! And just like that, Mabel pushes Stan and Ford towards you and tugs their hands so they sit across from you. Stan complains about his knees, and Ford asks Dipper exactly why the pig and goat are betrothed. Fits with what you know about both at this point. Mabel makes way with the wedding, and you sit cross-legged, the pillow and glow stick rings on your lap. Every so often, Mabel stifles a theatrical sob, wiping a very real tear from her eye before she turns to you for the rings. Oh, Mabel, how should the betrothed um, wear their rings so that since they don't have ring fingers, just put them on where you think they fit best. Um, probably on their heads like glowy tiaras. You stand and carefully place one ring atop each animal's head. The kings of gravity falls. Almost immediately after that, both of them shake their heads, and the rings predictably fall off. Maybe not. Aww, they looked cute like that, though. Mabel gasps, bright eyes wide with an idea. Maybe I'll make them crown so they really can be royalty! Ooh, that's pretty good! That'd be very cute, actually, yeah. Dipper reappears with a new camera, and Mabel throws more rose petals at him. A few get stuck to his fluffy hat, and he rolls his eyes but retaliates by taking a very close-up picture, the flash temporarily blinding her. Hey! Save the film for the renewedly weds! I need, I need plenty of pictures for my scrapbook! You owe me a new camera for this, Mabel! He sounds annoyed, but his fond sibling smile gives him away, and he starts taking pictures of the happy couple getting odd angles as Mabel pushes them into silly poses. You step away from the scene and go to head back into the house. Being a ring bearer is pretty thirsty work. I am actually pretty thirsty. But stand it forward, stop you before you make it to the door. Hey, Ren! Thanks for playing along with Mabel and the whole wedding thing. We're both ver we're both glad you're willing to entertain her whenever we're gone. She didn't uh make you do it, did she? Nah, I figured they'd go along with it for a while. She's fun, though. Mabel, certainly something, that's for sure. Regardless, thank you. Ford takes a step forward on the patio, peering down at you through his cracked glasses. You'd be somewhat intimidated if it weren't for the fact that he's... blushing? I, um, I appreciate that you occupied the kids for Stanley and I while we were out. Both of them seem to like you being around. You grin at him with a shrug. 
Ah, oh, that's no problem. They're fun to hang out with, even if I'm going to have some strange photos in Mabel's scrapbook at, at the end of it. Ford smiles, sweet and almost kind. It's your turn to turn red when he looks at you like that. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got, uh, things to get back to. Yes. He walks past you into the house, Stan following soon after. Stan elbows forward and it looks like he muttered something to him, but you can't hear what it was. Whatever he said, Ford looks scandalized, but he's teasing him about me or something. Hey, Ren! You're gonna miss the party! We got popsicles! I call the red ones! Pineapple ones are mine! I call dibs! If you have, if you have any orange ones, those are mine. But the pineapple ones are the best ones! Mabel and Stan wrestle over a yellow popsicle while Dipper contentedly unwraps a red one, holding above his head and out of Gomper's way. Ford gingerly picks out a purple ice pop and leaves the ice chest open for you to grab one as well. While Stan and Mabel aren't looking, you hide the pineapple popsicles at the bottom of the chest. Dipper sees and starts laughing, but doesn't tell. <laughs> they're a strange bunch, those two sets of Pines twins, but they're certainly making your summer a whole lot more exciting at your... As your stay at the Mystery Shack continues, you wreck of a car sitting outside in the heat of the setting sun. Was that an entire day in the game? Huh. Okay, I'll do another one, I guess. Depends on how long it goes, though. It's another day of summer with nothing to do but wait. Your schedule is surprisingly clear today. Ford usually has something going on for you to help with, and if not, Stan, Seuss, or the kids do. I'll find Ford, I guess, because I know him a bit better. You pass through the living room, and Mabel spots you from her seat at the table. Ren! I was hoping I'd see you! Come on, I want to ask you something! Mabel points down at the table with a raspberry pink colored pencil. Her art supplies, scattered across the table, lie across various sheets of paper with brightly colored doodles and lots of glitter. You see a drawing that looks like a cross between Barney and Godzilla, a page full of puppies, and a, a page of the drawing that looks kind of like you, with, is that Ford or Stan? Mabel's not finished with it yet, but the telltale jawline gives it away. This is the one for, this is the, this is the picture that we see at the end of each day. Isn't it? You sit down at the table, across from Mabel, and suddenly get the same feeling you'd get at a job interview. It's intensified when she pushes her organized chaos of papers aside and steeples her fingers over the table surface. Friend, I'll be frank. I've been trying to find a match for my grunkles for a while, but I never seem to get their matches made. Sorry, a match? attracted to the shack by a magnet of love. It was a sign, and this week just made the chemistry you share with him obvious. You know who I'm talking about, right? There's only one choice. Yes, yes, yes! Grunkle Ford's great with family, but he's still guarded. You're the first new person I've seen him actually get interested in. Maybe if you get to know him, he'll see that social interactions aren't so hard, and maybe love was on his horizon all along. Love? That's a jump, to say the least. And anyway, though you've had the chance to share some quality time with Ford, you still feel like there's a huge part of his story that you're missing. How much do you even know about him anyway? And why do you want to know so much more? Mabel, Ford and I haven't spent all that much time together. Sure, we shared a couple adventures, but... But nothing! Adventures are the perfect bonding material! I know that firsthand! But you know what would really get this chemistry going? Er, talking to him? <laughs> what? Now I'm thinking of something more romantic. Hold on, I'm getting an idea. I'll get everything ready, Ren. You just focus on failing comp- I'm not failing. You just focus on falling completely and utterly in love. Matchmaker Mabel is back in the game. 
just as you exit the talk with Mabel, you run into Dipper right outside the living room, and it doesn't seem like an accident either. His arms are crossed and he's looking at you, dubiously. So, I heard about Mabel's plan. How do you- I just left the room! Yeah, well, word travels fast, and Mabel sends out mass update texts. His defensive posture softens a bit. Just tell me one thing. I know my Grunkles can look, can look after themselves, but can you promise me you won't hurt Grunkle Ford? You can trust me? Okay, Ren. I'm remembering that. What would be the difference between that? I don't know. A text notification sounds and Dipper checks his phone. And be ready at... Any time... For your date with Grunkle Ford! Ugh, this feels awkward enough. No offense, Ren, it's just... My Grunkle Ford actually going on... A date? Do old people even date? Kind of hard to wrap my head around. I hope Mabel doesn't ask me for my help tomorrow. I mean, I have enough trouble trying to date for my se- Mabel calls down from upstairs. Hey, Dip Dop! I'm gonna need your help tomorrow! Yep, there she goes. Well, never mind. Oh boy. During the next few days, you, Ford, and Dipper get further into the DD and MD campaign you left off on, and you have time to flesh Alex out to compliment Tyros and Vernon on the team. So I guess we're just gonna keep- I guess that this is just gonna keep going or something? I don't know. Dipper tells you the three-person troop is typically small for a DD and MD group, but you've been getting the hang of the game, mostly from taking advantage of Ford's helpful nudges in the right direction. You've noticed Ford staring at you during the game sometimes, and you can't deny that you've been caught doing the same. After your <clears throat> fateful chat with Mabel, you're on edge and wait for her to pull something out of her sleeve. Every time she bursts into a room with fistfuls of crayons, you jump at least a foot in the air. But you've been doing your best to pretend everything's normal, or at least as normal as it gets in Gravity Falls. You ventured out into town earlier today and did some tourist-worthy exploring and run to the Pines family at Greasy's Diner half about, about half an hour later. According to a giddy dipper and exasperated Ford, a door to another plane had appeared in the fridge in, instead of food. What? <laughs> Post-documentation and, and inspection, and lots of skeptical squinting from Dipper and complaints from Stan, Ford had suggested they all just wait it out. Oh yeah, I remember those. That was in the journal. For a moment, I thought, like, they opened the fridge and suddenly went into the diner, and... No, I... Okay. Now this makes sense. They, they just, like, saw that instead of food, and so they decided to go to the diner rather than try to fix this, because... Okay, that took me a moment to figure out what was going on. It was gone by the time you got back. You secretly hoped to catch a glimpse, but when you asked Ford about it, he assured you it was nothing special. Wouldn't even have ranked among his top ten, he'd said, pushing his glasses up on his nose. After that series of fridge-related events, the shack fell quiet. Dipper ventured out with his camera equipment off to film something amazing, and stands in his office, checking in with his sources, whatever that means. That leaves you and Ford, both intently reading on the shack's patio. It's warm and comfortable, yet the overhang shields your eyes from the, from the blinding summer sunlight. You glance over at Ford. He looks calm and collected, same as he's been all week. Conversely, you've been a little nervous around him ever since Mabel's matchmaking interview. It's not that you haven't thought of him in that light before, it's just that you never plan on actually trying it out. You can always ask Mabel to call off the matchmaking thing, after spending the past couple days convinced that Mabel was going to spring an unavoidable romantic situation on you at a moment's notice, you'd rather not live with that kind of anxious anticipation. You settle back into your book, a paperback Ford lent you. It's a jargon-heavy sci-fi with an abstract cover you probably would have overlooked on a bookshelf, and you think you're about to see the first glimpse of the plot after a three-chapter introduction. <laughs> You go to turn the page of your book, 
but the back door slams open. Mabel explodes onto the porch, armed with oven mitts and an apron. Oh boy. Ryan, Grickle Ford, I need help and I need it now! Ford sits up with a wide-eyed look, fixing his glasses that have been startled off the bridge of his nose. What is it? Is something burning? Is something burning in the kitchen? I... I need help baking. Ford relaxes enough to leave a bookmark in his dog ear novel and close it, but looks to Mabel with an air of bewilderment. Oh, she's wearing an apron! She actually is wearing an apron. Okay. Quentin's throwing a... I can't read that. Um, I'm trying to remember how this is pronounced. I wish I knew some of how German letters were. Um, I'm guessing that isn't like a Grusch Dich Hasen. I can't. Oh, a party for Marius when he comes to visit, and they volunteered to make cupcakes. And I was like, yeah, I can totally bake a batch of cupcakes. But as it turns out. Smoke unfurls from the back doorway, inevitably followed by the screech of the fire alarm inside. Mabel wrings her mitted hands and winces guiltily. I can't! Mabel rushes back into the house, you and Ford coming close after. You reach the door in time to see Ford, unruffled, drag a chair over the smoke detector and disable it as easily as flipping a light switch. I still need to learn how to do that, actually. As for the smoke, you go straight for the kitchen window and open it, fanning the smoke out of the house. Mabel looks guiltily at you both, attempting to waft the smoke out with her oven mitts. Now that you look, now that you really look at her, you notice there's flour on her sweater, and the kitchen floor, and the kitchen counter, leading to one lopsided bag of flour surrounded by a similar mess of ingredients. Looks like you could use a hand, Mabel. Why didn't you ask for help much sooner? I'm sorry, Grunkle Ford. I just... I wanted to make them myself. She wilts under exaggerated despair. But I need these cupcakes and I... I need your help. She points at Ford. And your help! Mabel then moves her pointer finger to you. Oh dear. Both of you absolutely need to help me with this! She looks between the two of you with those Mabel, pan Mabel patented puppy dog eyes, and whatever will you had left to resist crumbles immediately. You pat her shoulder reassuringly. It's alright, Mabel. Baking is a difficult art, and even professionals have off days. And, um... You glance at the oven that's still leaking lingering smoke. I think adult supervision might be good now. Might be good right now. I was actually going to bake something recently, too, but our oven is dead. I still don't know why it's dead. It just went completely kaput. We haven't been able to turn it back on. So. I can't bake for a while. Mabel nods, looking between you and Ford. Well, it'll be easy peasy with you and Grunkle Ford helping me. You look to Ford, and Ford just looks questioningly to Mabel. Why would you need both of us, Mabel? Because, because we need to make, like, a bajillion of these! So many! This is a huge party! Plus, the more people that make them, the more love these cupcakes will have! There needs to be so much love in these cupcakes! I see where she's going. That doesn't... Please, Grunkle Ford! You and Ren are super conveniently the only ones who can help me! Maybe Dipper... He's out filming! He will be back till sunset! It's gotta be you two! <laughs> Ford glances hopelessly out to the hallway for one moment, and Mabel gives you a conspiratorial wink when, while he's not looking. And then it dawns on you. It's already dawned on me, oh boy. This is your match-made date with Ford. Is it getting hot in here, or is that just the oven? Well... Please, 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 Grunkle Ford! Ren is already gonna help out, right, Ren? Uh, yes, that's what I want. Heart picking up its pace, you hazard to look at Ford to find him looking oddly contemplative now that now compared to before. He looks to you for a fleeting moment, you catch out of the corner of your eye. His attention's back on Mabel by the time you register it, and Ford nods at her. 
All right, what do we need to do? Yes! Okay, first rule in baking, wear an apron! There's never a wrong time to make a fashion statement! Mabel holds two aprons out, one scarlet red and the other white. You have absolutely no idea when Mabel even retrieved these aprons in the first place, but she's already picked out who gets which one. The red apron is tossed to you, and the white one is thrown to Ford. You put it on and look down at yourself to read an upside down, BURN BABY BURN per Oh wait, that's actually... Isn't that a song? I don't know. Printed across your chest, with a picture of a fiery grill beneath it. Fittingly, it smells a little like burning. Ford's apron has some green text you didn't quite catch, but as he loops it over his head and ties it, you can read it clearly. <laughs> you stifle a laugh as you read. Text now clear over his broad chest. My other oven is a Bunsen. <laughs> okay. Like a Bunsen burner? Or it suits you? I... That's... I probably... I don't know. A Bunsen burner, maybe? I, I... I don't know what the right option is. I'm just going to go with what I would say. The second rule in baking is to know your recipe! It's got everything! The ingredients! The instructions! The temperature! Ford looks to the counter and picks up a piece of paper. You guess it's the recipe, judging by the frilly-looking photo of a three-tiered cake on the back. He scans over the ingredients, focused. And the third rule in baking is to forget your recipe! Oh, no, no, no. Sweetie, baking is a little bit of a science. There is... it is. Like, the thing about baking compared to cooking is that, like, a lot of the ingredients, like, they have, like, certain reactions that... Like, at certain temperatures reacts, like, baking soda and stuff reacts to, like, certain foods in different ways. Like, you need the exact recipe, otherwise it will not be at the right thing. Oh, boy. Uh... But that's only if rule two doesn't work out! How are you looking, Grunkle Ford? I was worried we'd be short on sugar. I can't do his voice right now. Hang on. I was worried we'd be short on sugar, but I think we'll make it. Are you switching recipes, Mabel? There's ingredients listed here that I are that aren't already on the counter. Mabel laughs loudly and attempts to clap Ford on the shoulder. She only manages to reach his elbow, and you suddenly suspect that whatever baked good Mabel had burned in the oven earlier was a fabricated failure. You glance at the stove top. The open box of store-bought cookies sitting on top confirms your suspicion. Oh. Oh, that is devious, Mabel. Oh, wow. Oh, Grunkle Ford, you tell the best jokes! That wasn't a joke. Oh, look! We need flour and I already have that out! Next! Ford reads the list of ingredients aloud and Mabel darts around the kitchen, gathering them as he calls them out. You set to work finding the utensils Mabel needs, searching through unfamiliar drawers it, she points out to you. After opening nearly every cupboard, you come up with an array of mismatched measuring cups, two half teaspoons, and a dented tablespoon. Good enough. How many cupcakes do you need for tomorrow, Mabel? Hmm, at least a hundred. What? You give her an undisguised look of incredulity, and Mabel sends back a series of gestures telling you to go along with it, pointing at Ford's thoughtful fast and mouthing, He bought it! So since the recipe makes 20 to 25, we... If it makes, like, quadruple, would probably... Quadruple is if we do the 25, but quintuple would probably, like, guarantee it. Because with the 20, you would need to multiply that by 5. I say I'm no good at math, but I do think along those lines. Uh, quintuple would probably be better. Exactly what I was thinking. If we play our cards right, 
we could get an exact 120, making full use of the cupcake pan each time. You're bewildered that Floor doesn't question the quantity. Instead, he's starting to factor in how many acceptable cupcake pans he can find in the cupboard, grumbling as he searches through the clangs and dull thuds of other bakeware. When was the last time, Stanley? Ah, here they are. Looks like we'll have that one that's rusted and one that isn't. Ren, get the pan that's already in the oven. If we manage to clean it... Uh, no, definitely uncleanable. It's totally burnt. Batter everywhere. Ren, can you... Mabel makes gestures to disposing evidence of her baking failure, and you wince but nod. Oh boy. Seizing your chance while Ford's back is turned, you grab the oven. You open the oven. You grab the oven, yes, of course. You open the oven, grab whatever's inside with the oven mitt, and rush outside to drop in the trash can midway around the shack. It turns out to be a couple store bought cookies dropped in the muffin pan and left to burn to a crisp. You shake the cookies out into the trash, leaving you with a still hot but perfectly serviceable pan. Huh. What, what would be a better option? Honestly, I would probably take it back and say, Hey, I managed to, hey, I managed to get rid of it all, but it probably wouldn't be as believable, but that's what I would do? I don't know. Sounds, that sounds like what I would do, though. So. You return to the kitchen. Look, the pan is actually fine. How lucky. Ford gives Mabel, oh no, <laughs> is he suspecting her now? <laughs> oh no. Yes, how fortunate. Mabel gives Ford a winning smile, which must be enough, because Ford lights up with a smile soon after, shaking his head fondly. You see that Ford has brought a mixing bowl out while you were gone, and wiped away most of the excess flour from the counter. He settles back into the role of recipe reader now that you're back. I've already turned down the oven to the correct temperature. Mabel, notably, doesn't look sheepish in the slightest, still grinning in front of the mixing bowl. So our next step is to add butter. I'll measure it out! And so you settle into a rhythm. Mabel measures ingredients and tosses them in. Ford reads out the recipe, pausing occasionally to balance out Mabel's haphazard method of throwing ingredients into the bowl, and you mix everything into a suitable batter. Two ingredients later, you notice that Ford rolled his sleeves up to his elbows as he works. You could get used to the sight of him like this. You don't notice Ford returning your stare until he clears his throat. Apparently your ogling lasted just a moment too long. Run? Um, yeah? I just added the first cup of flour. You can stir it in now. Oh, right. Ford adds another cup as you stir the ingredients together, trying to ignore how red your face feels. Aw, look at the two of you, working so well together. It's like you don't even need me to be perfect. You know she's talking about the matchmaking, but Ford doesn't take it that way. That's not entirely accurate. You're an essential member of our baking trio. After all, who else is creative enough to come up with a unifying theme for all these cupcakes? You're right! I hadn't even thought about that! Yet! Hmm... Mabel, standing on a chair next to Ford to reach the counter, hops up and sits at the edge of the counter. Lovey dovey or lovey dovey? Gah! I can't decide! While Mabel works it out with her creative genius, Ford scoops out the last cup of flour, going to wipe the excess back into the bag with his finger. Wait! I have the perfect idea! She lifts her arm in triumph, and promptly sends Ford's heaped cup of of and promptly sends Ford's heaped cup of flour flying. Ford fumbles to catch it, but ultimately fails, and the, the cup, along with the bag, fall into the mixing bowl, sending a mushroom cloud of flour into your face. Oh dear. <laughs> flour cakes Ford's glasses, along with his nose, cheeks, and forehead, 
and the front of his hair to the point where the color is indistinguishable from his usual streak of gray. Mabel, thankfully sitting to the side of her perch at the counter, only got half covered in the explosion of flour, even though she's already got various spots of flour all over her sweater. Oops! It's okay, Mabel. Here, take this and dust the flour off. Mabel attempts to brush flour off her sweater as Ford takes off his glasses, blowing puffs of white from the lenses and wiping them clean with the hem of his turtleneck. He manages to clear most of the flour off his skin, but he missed a spot. Uh, Ford? I'm fine. I've had many messier adventures in my little time than a bit of flour. No, that's not it. Um... Okay, I could, I could rush it out myself, but that's not something I would do, honestly. Um... I'm a little nervous about that kind of thing, but it sounds so cute. Um... What are we going to do about this batter? I don't know. There's still flour in your hair? Um... I feel like the stakes are much higher now that it's actually a date. Like... Let's see. Um... Still a lot of flour in your hair. What are we going to do about this batter? Brush this hair out myself. Um... Uh... There's still a lot of flour in your hair, I guess? What? No! He swipes his hair and he pulls back, white-handed. Oh no, did I mess up? Ford frowns at his flowery hand. I'll deal with that later. For now, let's figure out what to do with this batter. The three of you take a moment to stare at the disaster zone on the counter. Looks like the only thing we can do now is... It looks like the only thing we can do now is without the phone ringing. Okay, I think it stopped. Looks like the only thing we can do now is guess how much flour was added and scale the amounts of the rest of the ingredients to match it. I was going to start over. But that's a brilliant idea, Ren. Let's do it. Mabel, do you have another bowl for this operation? Good thing I found this mega big bowl for mixing. Mabel presents a vessel more akin to a tub than a mixing bowl. It's clean, though and Ford transfers the batter over. Good call, Mabel. Are you secretly a psychic? Nope, it's just a little thing I like to call the power of Mabel. She does exaggerated jazz hands, shaking more flour off in the process. The three of you laugh before beginning the post-flour mission. Due to the mishap, you now need four times the other ingredients to match the flour that got dumped into the bowl. An inconvenience, but not impossible. As you measure out more sugar, you spot Ford adding to the bowl by cracking two eggs at a time in each hand. Show off. The kitchen is quiet during the bustle of measuring, adding and remixing, but after a couple minutes, Mabel sighs. What's up, Mabel? I don't know, Ren. It feels silly to talk about. Nothing is too silly. Well, that's a broad statement, but the point is, we are willing to listen. Well... Candy and Grenda are throwing this party on Mary's yacht, right? You have no idea who either of these people are, but play along for Mabel's sake. Yeah? They're usually getting into that romance- They're really getting into that romance zone! Grenda even told me that they kissed! Ford only gives us a mild acknowledgement, so you have to amp up the reaction zone. They did not. They did so! Can you believe that? I seriously cannot believe that. Ford looks lost as he continues to mix the batter together. And I'm really happy for Grenda. I am, but sometimes I feel a little jealous. Grenda's like one of my best friends. I don't get why I can't just be happy for her without feeling this way. Everyone feels like that sometimes. That's kind of true. All you can do is try your best to stay positive for her, even if you're feeling a little bitter inside. And just know that eventually this feeling will pass. Really, everyone gets this way, even with friends. It doesn't mean you're a bad friend or anything. Thanks, friend. And anyway, if this is about the romance, Mabel, you're only a teenager. 
You might feel like you're watching your friends get married and settle down so quickly, but that doesn't start happening until you get to 25. You're a wonderful girl. You're smart, pretty, and you can probably make a mean batch of cupcakes. I know that whoever you end up loving will be lucky to have you. And that perfect relationship will come your way, in time. Mabel seems to brighten, and she smiles at you gratefully. Then she looks thoughtful. Hmm, getting married. I wonder when someone I know will get married. She's not specifically, but Ford pointedly coughs into his fist. Oh boy. Wait! We need to make these cupcakes extra special before we can bake them! I thought they were- I thought they already were. Weren't we going to split these into three parts, add food coloring, and marble them in? No, no, no! That's just special! I'm thinking extra special! I'm thinking explosion rocks! You mean that tiny candy that makes your mouth all tingly? I love that. Exactly! I'm gonna go grab my supply! She has a supply of them? I didn't even think the story work at sells them. Man, she's lucky. Mabel dashes out to get the candy, leaving you and Ford alone in the kitchen. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh wow! I am really blushing now, okay? <laughs> expected the atmosphere to turn awkward, but you find yourself anticipating something instead. You give forth a smile. I am, like, so red right now. I, I can't even see my face right now, but I know I'm so red. Good job calculating how much we needed to salvage the cupcakes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Ford laughs, leaning back against the counter. Oh, I just eyeballed it and adjusted based on the batter's apparent vis viscosity. No calculation involved. And, well, I couldn't let all our hard work go to waste after you suggested salvaging it. That smile and that art, oh my goodness. I don't get it. You wanted to start over? Well, well, I had a whole plan in mind. We are going to quintuple the recipe, and now it's more like octuple. But I think this was the better route to take. Now that I think about it, that was the last of our flour. <laughs> Wait, damn. Stanley needs flour for pancakes this week. Would you take cupcakes for breakfast instead? We're gonna have plenty of extra. Knowing him, I think the probability is very high. Oh my gosh, that art! That was adorable! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Who did that art? Was it, uh... What, what's their name? Was it like Sobel Knight or something? I, I, isn't that the person who did the art? Or was that somebody else? Whoever it was, that is amazing. You were about to say something else, leaning in to continue the conversation, when Mabel re-enters the room. She's carrying a cardboard box stuffed to the brim with bright packets of explosion rocks. I'm back! Alright, let's add these puppies in and make some cupcake magic! You and Ford start helping Mabel decant the explosion rocks into the batter. Ford glances at you as you shake the last packet into the bowl. Both of you know that the consumers of these cupcakes will get an unpleasant surprise from them exploding in their mouth, especially since the multicolored candy makes the batter look like unassuming Funfetti cupcakes. Unpleasant? That would be fun! Then it's time to split the ba batter and marble them in the pan. The three, color Mabel the three colors Mabel chose are deep purple, blue, and pink, which she says ties them in perfectly with her theme. So, are you going to tell us what the theme is yet? Nope! Let's get these in the oven! Ford picks up both pans and sticks them in the oven to bake. There's still plenty of batter in the mixing bowl. You've barely skimmed the surface with the first batch. You and Ford share another look. All right, time for the best part, frosting! What kind do we have? It's not what kind do we have, it's what kind are we making? Mabel presents another recipe card. Oh, geez. 
thankfully the frosting is far easier to make than the batter. By the time you and Mabel separate the sugary results into a few different bowls for coloring, the first batch of cupcakes came out of the oven 10 minutes ago and have cooled down on the counter. As Mabel puts it, they're ready to be Mabelified. Ford grins at her and he as he starts dyeing a bowl of icing bright pink. Decorating the cupcakes is, by far, the most fun part of the afternoon. The three of you sit around the kitchen table. Mabel purposely sits Mabel purposefully sits you and Ford next to each other while she takes the remaining spot, and you use different frosting tips to make designs on all of the cupcakes. Mabel had finally revealed her theme to be outer space because space is full of romance, and this way I can say their compatibility is out of this world! So the three of you cover marbled cupcakes in galaxy-worthy combinations of colored frosting. That actually sounds really cool. Ford, to put it simply, is delighted by the theme. You're pretty sure the constellations he painstakingly iced on his last 25 cupcakes would pass his illustrations in a stargazer's guide. The, in the middle of completing a second Orion, Ford gets some icing on his face. A drip of blue somehow made it onto his chin, promptly from testing the icing to make sure it tasted good. It did, of course. Mabel kicks you from under the table. Ow! Shh! And she nods her head at her grunkle, giving you a meaningful look, uh, giving you a meaningful look that Ford completely misses. He wipes most of it off, but there's now a streak of blue at his cheek. So you, uh, what should I do? Uh, uh it's a little too soon for touchy feely, I think. So. But I don't know if this is going to be good or bad. I don't know what to do. Or I guess I've known him for a little while. This could just be kind of a friend thing, I guess. Mabel watches you both expectantly, but you aren't sure you have the guts to do what she really wants to have happen. And besides, you're not sure Ford's ready for that. So you opt for plan B instead. Yeah, I'm not ready for that either. Here, I'll get it. You reach over with a napkin to gently wipe the streak away, hoping he doesn't notice how your hand shakes from with nerves from the close proximity. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Ford is also hyper aware of how close you two are now, and he can't ignore how his gaze drops from your eyes to your lips as you inch closer to wipe the icing away. Oh my goodness, I am bright red. <laughs> There, I got it. Ford's cheeks almost match his sweater. Oh, um, thank you, Red. Eventually, the three of you finish decorating over a hundred cupcakes. Looking at them all lined up on the counter, you can really see the decline in quality as you, Ford, and Mabel got worn out. The last few hours ha Hours, no. The last few have frosting and solid, col solid colors with just a handful of star-shaped sprinkles on top. I can't believe we're finally done. Yes, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I've had enough of the night sky to last me the rest of the week. Oh, but we're not done, what? Mabel sounds about as peppy as she has all day, even though she must be as tired as you and Ford. There's just one last thing to do. Clean up, because we have made a huge mess here. No, Grunkle Ford! More important than that! More urgent! More desperately needed! Ford looks perplexed. What could that be? The glitter! Mabel pulls over a sizable tub of blue edible glitter. Edible glitter, okay. That had been sitting at the back corner of the counter for, you're guessing, the whole afternoon you've been in here. Unscrewing the lid reveals its sparkling, shiny contents. Oh boy. Each of you grabs the handfuls of glitter, sprinkling liberally over each cupcake. The only person who seems to be hesitating is Ford, who keeps stopping to attempt glitter gradients in order to keep his earlier icing work clear of glitter. Aww. <laughs> 
Mabel always comes in after him, though, and fills in the blanks so that the whole thing sparkles. Soon enough, the tub is left nearly empty. Poor constellations. Great! All of these are ready for the party! Except this one's for Dipper, this one's for Grunkle Stan, this one's for Waddles. Mabel puts the exceptions aside, and the other three of you grab a cupcake each as a reward for an afternoon's hard work. You tap them in a pseudo-toast and absolutely devour them. The cupcake tastes odd, but that's what makes it amazing. It's probably explosion rocks. You can detect, hmm, the faint spice of love and adoration. A good, if not perfect, cupcake. The remaining cupcakes are strategically fitted into the pantry among the, shiz, the cheese boodles and other various snack foods, ready to be brought to the party tomorrow afternoon. Mabel stretches and yawns dramatically before grabbing the plate of cupcakes that had been set aside. Well, I get better get these over to the boys. You know how Grunkle Stan gets when he smells something cooking and doesn't get a taste. You're not quite sure you do, but four nods knowingly, so it must be true. Anyways, I'll leave you two lovebirds alone. Thanks for the help, and you're welcome for my help. Mabel sends a week and a finger gun as she leaves. Your heart freezes in your chest as Ford looks at Mabel's exit with an unreadable look, then faces you. I, um, you see? <laughs> I know what's going on. This isn't the first time Mabel's tried to find my match. Oh boy. You can't find the words to express your mixture of relief and confusion. Ford explains. I suppose she's at that age where kids are thinking about romance and, and dating. Stanley and I are just two of her recent subjects for these compatibility experiments. Last time, Mabel reached out to Mermando to set me up with a merman. She didn't tell me what type of situation it was, so I unknowingly grilled him with enough scientific queries about mer people to send him back underwater with a grumpy burble. <laughs> that totally sounds like something he would do. I think there's actually a fic about that happening with Stan. Ford gives you a small, genuine smile. But I can't say it's been all bad. After all, I haven't managed to repeat that kind of mistake yet here. <laughs> um... I don't know what I'd say. Between these options, I have no idea what it is that I'd say. Just kind of banter. How do you think this match is going? Go for the high six. This doesn't seem like a high six moment. So how do you think this match is going? I'm a little awkward like that, but I don't know if that's right. Like, it has the best choice. But, like, I'm not the kind of person who would say that, so I guess I'm going to go with how do you think this match is going? Ford shrugs, though he's sporting a light blush. I think this one has potential. You both look around the disaster scene of a kitchen. Since Mabel conveniently had other things to do, she left you and Ford with the task of cleaning everything. Ford rolls his sleeves up and adjusts his glasses. Come on, let's get this clip. Let's get this kitchen cleaned up. I call the caterers! I hear wedding bells! Okay, so... Oh boy! Alright! So that was another episode of Spinning Over Sands. That one, that one, that little image went a little too fast, but it looks good. I think I'm doing well. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!